এটা সহস্ত্র সংগঠন লৈ ধাবমান হওয়া বহু ফেক্টর আহি পড়ে বহু পরিস্থিতি বহু চিন্তাই তেনেকা একটা সংগঠন ধাবমান লোলে বাধ্য করায় বিশেষ করে সংযুক্ত মুক্তি বাহিনী গঠন করা যে মানসিকতা যে চেতনা এই চেতনাটা বহু দিনের প্রায় উমি উমি জ্বলি আছে এই বিভিন্ন বিভিন্নজনে বিভিন্ন ফর্ম চেষ্টা করেছিল এটা ইউনিক ফর্ম আইবা না সেভেন্টি নাইন যে বিদেশি আন্দোলন খেদ বিদেশি খেদা প্রবজন বিরোধী যদি মনোভাব এইটারে যে জাতীয় চেতনা এটা ফুটি উঠিছিল India's Northeast has been witnessing alternating chapters of conflict, peace and development. Assam, a state inhabited by more than 31 million people of diverse ethnicity and religion, had to tackle many insurgencies during the last three decades, the most important being the violent political movement for secession unleashed by the United Liberation Front of Assam. The history of Ulfa can be divided into three phases. In the first phase, that is from 1979 to 1984, uh, this phase is conspicuous by two important characters. This, number one, it tried to mobilize people by adopting various welfare-oriented activities. And secondly, in this phase from 79, it tried to go out to the foreign soil uh, for training. And from the, you know, the second phase, that is from 84 onwards to 1990, we found that state bounced back with various uh, actions against Ulfa. During the late 1980s and 90s, Ulfa's spread over Assam was substantial, and its international linkages were matters of great concern for the Indian state. State action, coupled with internal strife in the face of gross erosion of support base, has resulted in virtual military defeat of the organization and its ideology. What has perhaps helped is the mindless terror resorted to by the organization to the distress of the common populace. Alpha's terror tactics is a basically a uh, cause of uh, desperate act. They did have a support base, but it was rapidly depleting. And post 15 August 2004, Dhamazi blast, it is gone. They are just like the fish out of water. When the mass base support had gone, which evaporated post 2004, Alpha had nowhere to go. From 2000 onwards, we see certain structural changes uh, with Ulfa. For example, uh, we know it's the civil wing which took the leadership of Ulfa. But from 2000 onwards, the military wing became very important. That means Boris Bora now is in charge of Ulfa, and this military wing would now take over the leadership of Ulfa. That is number one. And secondly, till now, till 2000, revances against Delhi was very important. But once Ulfa became a part of international network, it became a part of arms uh, trading, now these grievances against Delhi these have become immaterial now. Now violence finds its own logic, they find their own clientele, and therefore violence has become an end in itself. I think the Ulfa is over. It has been a long time, more than three decades, times have changed. The constituents have all tired out. Batches of people have been coming out in groups, surrendered, given up, led a better life than what they have led in the jungles. And then the society has also changed, especially those who have come out to hold talks with the government. They are serious. They want a solution, of course, within the purview of the Constitution of India. Meanwhile, Parish Borua, the elusive Ulfa chief, remains with a motley group in his hideout, while the larger breakaway faction advocates negotiated settlement with the government of India. <laughs> Ulfa's 
আলোচনালে আছো আর এই আলোচনার যোগেদি জাতীয় যে রাজনৈতিক যে সুরক্ষা পলিটিক্যাল সেফ গার্ড এটুক আমি প্রাধান্য দিছো আলোচনার ভিতর আর আমি আশা করছো যে ভারত রাষ্ট্রর আজি বর্তমান নেতৃত্ব তখন জনগণের প্রতি দিয়া যুতিশ্রুতি জনগণক দিয়া যে আশ্বাস যার উপর বিশ্বাস রাখি আমি আলোচনালে আগবাড়ি আইসিল আমি আশা করি যে সুদীর্ঘ দিনের যে রক্তাক্ত পরিবেশ হবল গাতে নিদিয়ে শাশা চৌধুরী দ্য ফরেন সেক্রেটারি অব উলফা এন্ড আ ভেটারেন ইনসার্জেন্ট থিংস উলফা আপসার্জ ওয়াজ ডিউ টু সোসাইটাল নিডস উইথ এ মুভমেন্ট দো উইথ এস টেকেন আপ আর্মস ইট ওয়াজ আর্মস ওয়াজ অনলি এ সিম্বল ইট ইজ ইট ওয়াজ এ সিম্বল অব দ্য প্রোটেস্ট ভেরি মাচ এন্ড ইট ট্রাই টু কিপ দিস পিপুল উইথ ইট এন্ড ইটস টু মাচ ভেরি মাচ ইটস এ ভেরি সোশ্যাল মুভমেন্ট এট দ্য টাইম আই এম টেলিং ইউ Social movement it was in the beginning. It was definitely so in Tingkhang and its adjacent areas of the Brugger town in Upper Assam. This area is rich in resources like tea and petroleum. Over the last two decades, the simple village folk here has experienced a roller coaster ride of dreams of liberation shattered and rekindled. Torn between an initial goodwill for the Ulfa Kaders acting as defenders of their community and the later disillusionment combined with regular bouts of intense state action, the people felt the need to set a new vision for themselves. And this new vision was scripted by an erstwhile Ulfa leader, Moni Manik Gogoi. আলফা থাকা আগে মানে যা কিনছিল আলফা থাকতো তাকে কইল আর আজও সেই কামে কো খালি এটা অস্ত্র আর সাবম হতো ইস্যু নাই আর আমি কই এটা আসল বিপ্লব তো এটা আমিহে কিন্তু ভাব আর্থ সামাজিক ক্ষেত্রে বিকাশের কারণে বা সমন্বয়ের কারণে জাতি সামগ্রিক বিকাশের কারণে আমি যা পদক্ষেপ লো মানে ভাবো যে ইয়ে যেন আমি প্রকৃত আসল বিপ্লব করার উপর উঠেছে আমি যেটা আলফা করে আসল সেই মুহূর্তত আমার অধিক সংখ্যক লড়াই কিন্তু স্বাধীনতার অর্থটো বুঝি পয়া না হয় না আলফা নামত এখন মানুষ যদি আবেগ যুক্তিহীনতার মাজত তেওঁলোকে যে জপিয়াই পড়লে অস্ত্র টকা বা হত্যা এইবিল ইমান গুরুত্ব দিলে কিন্তু প্রকৃততে মানুষখিন কি কে তেওঁলোকে প্রত্যেকে প্রতিটি জাতি জনগোষ্ঠী নিজকে বুলি কোয়া যদি ভেটি রচনা করবো লাগে সেইব গুরুত্ব নিদলে ধুমুহার দরে একদম ধাম ধুম আহিলে একটা ভয়ঙ্কর একটা পরিস্থিতি সৃষ্টি করে এটা হওয়াই নোহায় একটা প্রত্যাহ্বান জানালে আর আজি কি কে সব অকমান যদি মনোনিবেশ করো নিশ্চয় আমার সতীর্থসল লোক পিনে কিন্তু বহুত কাম করবো আমি হয় হয় নিশ্চয় কি হল বিপিন বন্ধু ভাই দেবী 
একো নাই কোয়া যে কিনো কম আ তেনে এখিনি চিন্তায় মনৰ মাজত পুহি ৰাখিছো জাতীয় যেটো প্ৰেম জাতিটো সাৰ্থতে এতিয়া তেনে সংস্কৃতিক এটা দিখৰ কথাই চিন্তা কৰিছো হয় হয় আৰু আমাৰ এই নতুন যে প্ৰজন্ম এতিয়া আমি ভাবিছো কি বলুক এৰি খেলতে যোগ দিয়ক হাসুৰি যোগ দিয়ক খেতিত যোগ দিয়ক সেখানে এতিয়া তানে হস্ত হংগামৰ পাখংগিতা অসমত আজি নাই সকলো এটা কৰ্ম সংস্কৃতিত জড়িত হক উৎপাদনশীলতা প্ৰক্ৰিয়াৰ মাজত জড়িত হক কিমান প্ৰতিভা আছে আমাৰ সাধাৰণ মানুহৰ মাজত কিমান শক্তি আছে আৰু গোটেই ৰাজ্যখনত কিমান সম্পদ আছে সেখানে হে উপলব্ধি কাম কৰিছোঁ টুডে মনি মানিক হেজ কলড এ মিটিং অফ সাম অফ হিজ ফৰ্ম কলিগ্ছ ইন উলফা দেভ কাম ফ্ৰম প্লেছেজ লাইক ডিগবয় টিংখং মৰাণ চাবুৱা এণ্ড নাহৰকটীয়া they are now known as the pro talks ulfa under the leadership of mrinal hazurika the erstwhile commander of the dreaded 28th battalion which advocates negotiations with the government e je ami par korilu khudirgho bosor par korar pisot ami kiman ag bahilu aru kiman pisu alu jati tue kiman pale aru kiman heru ale e gute kotha kini ami jugbi koribo loga hol jugbi kori mene dekhilu je আমি নতুন পথৰ সন্ধান কৰিব লাগিব ইয়াৰ সমস্ত এই গোটেই অঞ্চলটো বজাৰ ইয়াৰ খিলঞ্জা মানুহে দখল কৰিব লাগিব তেতিয়াহে আমি নিজৰ অস্তিত্বটো বৰ্তাই ৰাখিব পাৰিম আমাৰ সংস্কৃতি আমি বৰ্তাই ৰাখিব পাৰিম আৰু নিজৰ ভৰি আমি থিয় দিব পাৰিম মোৰ মণিমানিক আলফাত যে সহযোগ কৰিছিলে প্ৰথম দিনটোৰ কথা মোৰ মনত আছে কেইজনমান সতীৰ্থৰ লগত গৈ এটা মদৰ মহল মানে তেখেতে জ্বলাবৰ কাৰণে গৈছিলে আচল কাহিনী আজিও লাগে আলফা সাধাৰণ মানুহৰ তাৰে ধাম ধুমকে তাৰ মদ বট কৰিছে কোনো বিকল্প নাই সেখানে চৰকাৰী হেবলে কোনো কিয় বট কৰা নাই এই যে সাধাৰণ মানুহখিনি যে তেনা ধৰণা হাই কৰিছে হাইছমেন কৰিছে হেতু মই প্ৰতিবাদ আছিল তাৰ মহলত মহলত মাইছে তাৰ পাছত বুজি পালে মোৰ যে উদ্দেশ্যটো পকিটাতে হট আছিল আৰু হেই দিনাই মোক কিন্তু টিংখাং সমষ্টি আৰু শাসনী মজা অৰ্গেনাইজাৰ হিচাপে দায়িত্ব দিছিলে মণি মানি গগৈ যেতিয়া আমি প্ৰথম লগ পাইছোঁ লগ পাওঁতে দেখিছোঁ যে এই ল'ৰাটোৰ সেই গোটেই অঞ্চলটোৰ মানুহখিনিৰ মাজত এটা বিৰাট প্ৰভাৱ আছে গোটেই মানুহখিনিয়ে খুব মৰম কৰে ল'ৰাজনক আৰু ল'ৰাজন ইমান ভদ্ৰ অমায়িক আৰু ইমান শান্ত আৰু তেওঁৰ চিন্তাবিলাক ইমান সুন্দৰ মানে কিবা কাব্যিক মানে এটা ৰূপ থকাৰ নিচিনা Moni Manik along with others were asked to go to Myanmar for special training and also to escape from intensified operations against the Ulfa. After about a year and a half in Myanmar, Moni Manik comes back to his homeland for a brief period in 1994. During that time, anti-insurgency operation was at its peak. Also, the Ulfa cadres and their surrendered brethren were both letting loose a reign of terror Moni Manik's family had to bear the brunt of anti-terror state operation on the one hand and threats from the surrendered Ulfa on the other In the face of grave threat to his life Moni Manik sneaked into his village to find his deserted house in shackles He goes to his in-laws place and to his relief sees his wife and her sister attending to his children Dipali was a neighbor who had been helping Moni Manik and his friends initially in their social work and later in their ulfa activities she married moni manik in the year 1992 during moni manik's life as a fugitive she had to weather many a storm teo je nokore teo je ko rajo kam kore hei ko hetu kane moi koi bologiya hoy kam bo mona bua hal ba ba ghor daitto luwa khoi phola jabo sikonwa ku luwa khoi soi ona dhan banable jua gutte kam hei moi koi bologiya hoy ghor solwa ba ambho koi It was love all the way. 
The letter written by Moni Manik from jail on 16th November 1998 to his wife is a vivid testimony of the triumph of love and hope. The letter is also eloquent about a resolve to lead a future life of peace, dignity and justice for all. After more than 10 years of steering clear of the long arms of the law, Moni Manik was finally arrested in 1998. He was arrested under the Terrorist and Disruptive Activities Prevention Act with the state charging him of attacks on security force personnel. I was working in 1998 and I was in the same time. 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 Even while serving the jail terms, Moni Manik got down to his usual business of organizing his fellow inmates and attempted to improve the living conditions by both indulging in protests and licensing with the jail authorities. He continued to read and write inside the jail. He also penned a few Bihu songs narrating the dreadful conditions of the prisoners. <laughs> Once the old militants get released from the jail, they go into the, they find two parts. One is they can easily go back to the jungles, and the other is they come out to the society, quote unquote, they, they become a new category called Sulfa, Surrendered United Liberation Front of Assam. It's become a, a this word now, because Sulfa is a word. Uh, and sometimes derogatory, sometimes feared, and mostly feared, of course. But Moni Mani chose neither. He had in fact resumed the journey he undertook even before he joined the Ulfa. This journey has been a saga of search for a life of honesty, unity and development. <laughs> জীবশ্রেষ্ঠ মানুহ হৈছে বিভিন্ন ধৰণৰ প্ৰতিভা বহন কৰি পৃথিৱীত জন্ম হয় আৰু মানুহ যদি নিজক আৱিষ্কাৰ কৰিব জানে মানুহ যদি নিজক সাধনা কৰিব জানে তেওঁ নিজকে সেই প্ৰতিভা বিকাশ কৰি বা নিজৰ যিখিনি হত্তা ভাব সৃষ্টি হৰতাক প্ৰকাশ কৰি হত সহস্ৰ মানুহৰ তেওঁ প্ৰেৰণা অমল উৎক হ'ব পায় হে কানে মানুহৰ সকলো ক্ষেত্ৰতে মই তেওঁলোকৰ মাজত কেৱল সম্ভাৱনা দেখো মু মু ডিষ্ট্ৰিক in fact, it all started with the discovery of the bounty of Mother Nature in this blessed land. 1987 is an important landmark in the lives of the people of Salmari Digulia village. Oil India Limited started exploration in and around its nearby hamlets when they found potential of huge oil reserves. Oil India Limited is a public sector undertaking with its headquarters in Duliajan, which is about 30 kilometers away from Tinkan. You know, we are very proud to have a tagline called Oil India Limited, a people's company. Yes. But every day, it's becoming a challenge for us to hold on to this tag because the aspirations of the community is increasing exponentially. Yes. But one thing is very clear, that it's only when Oil India Limited can operate can be profitable, can do uh, what the government expects us to do, to, to, to help the country uh, secure its energy needs. That's the only time when we can actually give back to the community. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a give and take situation. Yeah. The genesis and growth of Salmari Digolia Yuva Sangha, a youth club, is intrinsically linked to the lives and philosophy of Moni Manik and his fellow travellers. The villagers wanted to realize their dream of leading a quality life 
while asserting their rights in the face of a very serious intervention by Oil India Limited in their land. We have seen companies which have sought to make interventions in people's lives right. by providing them benefits, right. Right. be it state-sponsored or corporate houses. Right. They have uh, entailed uh, severe resistance from the people. Right. So, in, in your case, must be. Oh, yes, uh, there were, uh, there are, and there were instances where uh, our operations was halted, and there was what we call the buns and blockers. Mm -hmm. We are very happy to tell you that uh, a place, Shalmari, Tinkhang was an area where when I joined this company, our oil collecting station was, uh, you know, ghirraoed and blocked by the local people. Uh, in their walls, they wrote Oil India Go Back. The same area today welcomes the company in a series of patient hearings involving the district administration. We could see that people are also coming forward with solutions. When Oil India Limited displayed its genuine concern, for the all-round development of the local folks, the Sangha reciprocated by extending its cooperation. There were problem areas, however, but were mostly settled amicably. The symbiosis between Oil India Limited and the community is evident in the grateful acknowledgement of Oil India Limited's contributions in various welfare schemes undertaken by the youth club. <laughs> আজি <laughs> It's a long list, ranging from organizing sports competitions, setting up of cultural centers, several agricultural farms, skill development for women, supply of goods to schools, colleges and clubs, licensing with Oil India Limited for community development in various locations, afforestation drives, medical camps, and a whole lot of other activities. I can look at a good police line. Both in the more police, I But on key camps, I have no cannot on a hopal. I mean, Potomato, Bolapuzno, Abna, Gahoy Puhiasu. Moni Mani Gugu is a very interesting example of changing times, changing mindset, changing perceptions in Assam. He was a typical Assamese boy who was attracted by insurgency. He saw how futile the whole exercise was. He quit, came back to his village, and in the meantime, got associated with Oil India Limited with officers like Prakanta Borka Koti, and worked on this project called Project Rupantar. Today, Rupantar has brought about such interesting changes where the farmers there are not tilling their land with the help of bullocks, but with mechanized implements where young people are working with computers, where women are working on improvised uh, uh, looms. And it's brought about a tremendous economic change in the countryside in and around Nahalkotia and Duviazan. That's a different kind of revolution that the likes of Moni Mani Gogo have brought about because he also has a dedication and a foresight and a missionary zeal, which can be likened only with the ones like Mother Teresa. Nahoroni Primary Health Center is in Nahorkotia. In shambles, due to negligence for a long period of time, the hospital needed a complete makeover to be of some consequence to the needs of the community. Driven by his characteristic zeal, 
he also took up the cause of the Tingkhang Primary Health Center. Like in the case of Nahor Kutia, in this case also, he initiated a movement for people's participation and enlisted the help of the district administration and Oil India Limited. Tingkhang PHC is in fact a testimony of excellence not only in health service in a remote area, but also of aesthetics crafted by Monimani Gogoi himself. The ability to connect with all sections of people, including the young minds, has been Moni Manik's USP. It was through the Sukumar Kala Kendra that Moni Manik experimented projects on ethnic amity. Emphasizing on learning each other's cultural music and dance forms by the various ethnic communities, he truly believed in unity and diversity. He has a trick or two up his sleeve to keep the folks in good humor. And after entertaining them, he comes back to his mission of social reconstruction. Not only in Tingkham, but also in the neighboring areas of Moran, Rajgur, and Nahorkutia, women's self help groups, poultry farms, etc., were set up under his leadership. Initially, he was talking about the macro level kind of issues. But he realized that by rupturing the state, he cannot actualize his dream. That's how he brought back the role of individual. He brought back the role of the institutions. That in, by, that's how he set up some you know, NGOs. And he actually brought together the people with him. And slowly and gradually, his canvas, his ways of incorporating various stakeholders into the system kept on expanding. And that's how he kind of developed a civil society which had brought back the confidence of the people. These women are singing folk hymns seeking the divine blessings for the early success of the Sasoni Merbil ecotourism project. The villagers and the stakeholders of Sasoni are happy that Moni Manik's efforts for development of the Sasoni Merbil project is being documented, and therefore they arranged a special welcome for our unit. It was in 1952 that officials struck oil in Nahorkutia, at the heart of which is Sasoni. That was the first oil find in independent India. In 2010, villagers here hit upon yet another find, the tourism potential of the region. Thus was born 
the Sassoni Merbil Ecotourism Project. The period from 7, 2007 to 11, I was uh, uh, posted as a district uh, forest uh, officer. There was this man called Mani Muni Gogai, and uh, I could see the uh, this this man had led the entire uh, village army. He actually explained me the potential of this place and uh, showed me around. So uh, he talked to the deputy commissioner after coming back, and uh, that time our deputy commissioner, Mr. Gyanin Tripathi. Uh, he took uh, interest in that and both of us then started working on this and finally uh, we thought that you know it's it's a place of which has a lot of potential to develop ei jitu elaka dekhise yate amar bibhinna dhonor porikalpana bhitor 22 ta ami cottage banwa hobo later the district administration came forward to provide funds for the project under the national rural employment guarantee scheme and other such rural development schemes Oil India Limited too had become a partner in the project. Finally, Assam Tourism Development Corporation sanctioned an amount of rupees three crores for the project. Somya Deep Datta, who heads an organization called Nature's Beckon, is a green activist writer. He says that Merbil is an excellent area, it's a wonderful wetland basically a natural wetland and the thing is that you will get all ideal characteristics of wetland in the Merbil and one of the most important aspect of the Merbil it's a breeding ground of Indian softshell turtle which is an endangered species and you will get lots of uh, residential birds mostly water birds in Merbil every year hundreds of migratory birds congregate in the Merbil areas there is also another ecological, uh, indicate the ecological significance of that area. And in fact, Merbil is a part of a greater ecosystem of the rainforest area. And they are just into the Merbil, you will get the rainforest, which is uh, one, one portion of that rainforest is the Dehing Patkai Wildlife Sanctuary, and which, is, uh, which is wonderful wildlife sanctuary. To take the idea of the project forward, Monimani Gogoi has created a core team of dedicated workers. This group has been liaisoning with various government and other agencies for the early completion of the project. By the end of 2011, I left uh, the Bruga district and I joined as Managing Director of Sam Tourism Development Corporation. We started uh, with the project and uh, we got a firm uh, via uh, you know, Trend MMS who was our partner in this uh, project as a chief uh, uh, consultant. And uh, we also roped in uh, N.A. Fenesta, who is a French uh, architect, who is based in India, and he's working in various, various places like Nepal, Afghanistan, and he's been a uh, pioneer in designing ecological, uh, ecological projects like that, which balance with nature. We started with that concept and uh, we did a master planning for the entire uh, Sasuni Mabil area, which also includes a circuit, Jaipur Rainforest, the Dibru Sekwa National Park and Sasuni Mabil. By this process has a manual at a OT Hagu Possidae. Hey, a onusantu, Ubo Dutonosile, Atake Halagota, the Duheza Sato Sate, Yat Duamuli Gitu Gasile. Sai has a mohile, or Titi Hokolo, Alani Hokolo, Pool City, I do Viosta Gosile, Aru, by Hatan Hazar, Bivinatona Pitapona, Evilacta Raja, Amak Hosu Hisape Aguasile. Guti Mabel Connor, Sariu Faleta, Rasta, I mean Nirman Kuruba Karnami Jorno Kurishu, Mabel Connor, Sariu Kaketoka, Rise, Nizor Potamati, Pry at Thais Pot, at Thais Pot Mati, Postur Karna Rise, Edisa. You know, Apunaluke, future of Karniki Babis. Kakanke, Bidehi tourists, Apunaluke, track Kurbo Paribo Legibo, are your economic viability to Takibo Legibo? Yarzikini Jebo Bushitro, Ekini Kidore Nikut Rafi. But Ziman Paru, Comco, I make Cotti Cori, Keneco Bessi, Tarpur, Lap Kuru Paru, 
সেইকাৰণে আমি বিভিন্ন এই সংস্থাৰ লগত কথাখিনি পাতিছো ইতিমধ্যে নেচাৰছ বেকনো আহিছে তেখেতসকলে যথেষ্টখিনি আমাক পা পৰামৰ্শ আৰম্ভনি সময়ৰ পৰা দি আছে What a hyacinth apparently is a major challenge that Moni Manik and his group faces while making the project work. For now, they are promoting ingenious ways of turning these hyacinths into some eco-friendly, profitable enterprise. সেই তাৰে এটা পৰীক্ষামূলকভাৱে আমি মেটেকাৰ পৰা জৈৱিক হাৰ উৎপাদনৰ এটা প্ৰক্ৰিয়াৰ কথা ভাবিলোঁ ইয়াৰ মানে নাইট্ৰজেনটো আছে ইয়াতে বহুত আৰু এই হাৰখিনি কি কৰে মাটিৰ যেটো আদ্ৰতা সেই আদ্ৰতাটো ধৰি ৰাখে মেৰবিল ইকোট্ৰিজিমত নেটফিৰ সহযোগত তেওঁলোকে এটা ওৱৰ্কশপ কৰিছিলে মোৰ লগতে মানে মই আৰু কেবা গৈকে মোৰ সহকৰ্মী হিচাপে তেওঁলোকক শিকাই বুজাই লৈছো সুৱালি আছে বুৱাৰি আছে হি নট কি কেম টু দ্যাট ভিলেজ he had uh, settled there then he galvanized about the whole village and encouraged them to work for a eco tourism project and later on the district administration later on the all india has started now is a full fledged project it's been a tough life for this family the mother has seen abject poverty and other upheavals but never complains Despite economic hardships there is a sense of happiness and fulfillment among them because Moni Manik and his family command love and respect for what they are and what they do The driving principle for Moni Manik has always been honesty and integrity Na man jana mo har mo ek gom paiso ho pa dekhiso ho de lok paiso ho pa ami prem hoise bhal pa hoise মণিমাণিক গগৈ তখেতর এজন বড় এক্সেপশনাল ব্যক্তি তখেতে আমার থানা এলেকার লগতে ডিগড় যিনি এলেকার বহুতো ডর ডর প্রজেক্টর জড়িত হয়ে বহু কোটি টকার কাম হাতত ল বহু দিনের পর করে আছে কিন্তু আজিলেক কোনো ধরনের করাপশন আজিল দেখা নাই আর বাকি আমার কোনো তে খা খবর পয়া নাই নবুদিত দি এলডেস্ট সন স্টাডিং ইন ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল ট্রেনিং ইনস্টিটিউট প্রবীণ ইস দ্য ইয়ংগেস্ট The second of the three, Sukumar, appeared for a selection test of a junior post in Oil India Limited. He was selected on his own merit. But there was some controversy regarding his date of birth, which the oil management accepted as the papers were correct. But Moni Manik would rather live in hardship than have anyone question his integrity. Moni went to the extent of telling me once that if required I'm going to write to oil management that I don't want to get into this controversy if there's an iota of doubt that there is a hanky panky in the entire uh, you know uh, the paperwork of my son's candidature he should be immediately uh, uh, you know barred from entering this company and to the extent that if he wants he can give a press release the data ko islam all of data ko all of bya paislo moi monote kintu data ji tu adorkho ta he আদর্শ প্রতি সম্মান জানাই মানে চাকরি তো বাদ দিয়াটুকে ঠিক করল তারপর এটা সহজ হয়ে পড়ল মনি আই থিঙ্ক ইজ দ্য লাস্ট অফ দি এসমিজ হু ব্রিডস হু হু লিডস বাই এক্সাম্পল অ্যান্ড হি দাস থিংস ফর হুইচ মে বি আফটার টেন ফিফটিন টোয়েন্টি ইয়ার্স ওয়েন আই tell things about money money go go people refuse to believe a man like him is actually in flesh and blood i know einstein said about mahatma gandhi uh, i know uh, this money money is much uh, uh, you know a smaller entity but because i have not met mahatma gandhi nor have i met einstein so i can't comment on these two persons but here i money money go i have met him 
I've lived with him, and I can, I can bet this years down the line. People will see the documentary a hundred times to actually see whether this man was actually for real or a myth. The name Monimanik in Assamese means gems and jewels. Here we have a man who has always been a revolutionary in the truest sense of the term. He was radical then, he is radical now. His ultimate objective has always remained the same throughout. Only the means to that end have evolved into something not only more sustainable and justifiable, but something that has great humanitarian value. His journey has been a rebellion bejeweled.